What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another incredibly important AMC update to bring all of you before we get into this next trading week. So we have some really amazing pieces of news to go over from a for AMC about the new box office numbers that recently came out. We recently talked about how important these box office, box office numbers are could be going into this next week and we've absolutely blown it out of the water so this is something that we definitely need to cover now we're also going to go over something very important happening with the amc option chain i briefly touched upon this in my video from yesterday but i think that this is a very important thing that you guys need to fully understand going into the next couple of weeks with all of the very important catalysts we have coming up and we also have some very interesting SEC filings that Citadel has filed that suggest that they have sold a lot of their positions, a very high dollar amount, but most likely not a high percentage of their total holdings across all of their portfolios and investment funds. And this is something that I definitely want to talk about in this video as well. So before we get into all of that information, if you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do. It, but it helps me out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people as possible. And if you would like to earn two free stocks with Weeble valued up to $1,850, make sure you check out that link down below in my description. So let's take a look at this option chain first. When we're looking at this June 18th, uh, 2021 expiration date, so this is going to be the, the monthly expiration date for June. Again, these, these $40 strikes have an incredibly high open interest and really set us up nicely for a potential huge gamma squeeze. Now, over the last week, we did see strikes above 40 get added to the option chain all the way up to this $59 strike. We can see uh, that there's essentially no open interest now because these, these contracts are going to take time to settle in people's brokerage accounts. Uh, so we should get a, a better understanding of how many contracts are being held going into the next couple of weeks but or, or the next couple of days. But when we look at the volume right here, not too high. We do see a pretty high amount on these 50s and something to remember that when new options come onto the option chain, they're usually priced very uh, strategically. They're going to be really expensive when they come out. We can see the implied volatility is shooting up to over 400% on these super out of the money contracts. But we are seeing here that even after this $59 strike, they added strikes all the way up to 73. Now, here's why this is important. It's not just the market makers coming out and saying, hey, well, we're just going to add new strikes to AMC rand to AMC's options chain randomly. What they're thinking right now is that there is a possibility that AMC is going to have a significant run in the future. Now, here is also how this benefits us. Most likely, when AMC starts to run, they are going to continuously start adding these options to the chain. Now, when we see a lot of open interest pile into one specific strike or a, a series of strikes, that sets us up for what is called a potential gamma squeeze, where the, the institutions um, and the market makers that have sold you these options need to do what is called delta hedging, because when they sell you the options, they essentially become short the stock, um, and then they have to cover that position by buying the appropriate amount of shares on the open market. So the fact that they are adding all of these different strikes, uh, if we go on another run for AMC and a lot of these contracts run into the money and they have a pretty substantial open interest like we are seeing with the already existing contracts, that could set us up for another positive feedback loop of us running up in the share price, options expiring in the money, and then institutions having to provide more buying volume to cover all of those options. So this is why being able to look at the option chain is so helpful and, and you're able to catch a lot of things um, and really figure out exactly what is going on. And I also just saw here, um, I actually had not seen this before, the volume on Friday for this $40 strike was 111,273. If people bought these contracts and held them, this 224,298 open interest, which basically reflects the amount of contracts that people are holding in their brokerage accounts, could massively spike up and just gives us more potential for a larger gamma squeeze. Now, coming over here, A Quiet Place Part 2 becomes the biggest pandemic era US box office hit. This is great fundamental news for AMC as a company. A lot of people um, are kind of caught up in a lot of what's going on with the short squeeze, and some people may be forgetting that there are a lot of great fundamental things happening with AMC at the current time. This, in my opinion, regardless of all of the other uh, 
uh, a short squeeze situation that we have going on is a great reopening play for when our economy fully, fully reopens. Now we can see a couple of these numbers. A Quiet Place Part 2 made an estimated 48 million US dollars between Friday and Sunday. That exceeded predictions and was not far off the 55 million that the film had originally been projected to earn in March of 2020, according to Variety. You can almost hear the collective sigh of relief from studio executives across Hollywood, the magazine said. U.S. cinemas have been reopening in recent months, many with reduced capacities. There was uncertainty about whether people would want to go back, especially after getting used to the convenience of streaming. But that is not what we are seeing. People want to go out into the marketplace. They want to get back to their old lives and go out into these theaters. And I think that we are going to see these box office numbers continuously start to increase over the next couple of months as, as our economy and our world in general starts to fully reopen. Now, I want to get into this Citadel situation, and we don't really have the, the full picture right now. We are still all trying to figure it out, but I'm going to share you guys my thoughts on what is actually happening with all of these filings. And if you guys have any other information about this, make sure you comment that down below because we need uh, to really get the accurate information, especially in terms of this situation. Now, earlier last week, a lot of people uh, were hopping into chat rooms, live chats, Reddit, and a couple of comment sections saying that Citadel had liquidated their entire portfolio. Now, when I was looking into this, when you look at the actual page um, on, on uh, Fintel wh where we were actually getting this information, it does look like Citadel did sell a lot of their position and almost all of it, and it looked like they only had one holding. But when you look at their total, the total picture of what is going on, they actually still hold a very sizable portfolio, which we went over in my previous video, but we can still touch on that again. Now they are putting out more of these amended filings um, in, in the form of these these uh, these form D's. Uh, sorry about that. And we can see Citadel right here, Tactical Trading, Equities Fund, Wellington, Global Fixed Income, Candlestick, another Tactical Trading, Equities Fund, Kensington, Global Fixed Income. And when we look at a couple of these right here, um, we can see that they're selling in pretty big numbers. So when we come down here, uh, I forget exactly where they were in this. It's, it's not too far down. So this one was about a billion a couple of them are a little over a billion of some are under a billion but we can see notice of sales of unregistered securities so what is an sec form d so SEC Form D is the form used by companies to notify the SEC that they have made an offering of securities that they haven't registered these securities with the SEC. This exemption from offering securities without registering them is covered in SEC Regulation D, a section of the Securities Act of 1993. The SEC regulations, as noted above, are established to protect investors against fraudulent securities offerings, but the securities registration, uh, registration process is lengthy and complicated and it usually requires many months in the services of expensive experts to guide a company through the process. Uh, Regulation D, however, allows a business to meet the specific requirements to bypass the formal registration process. So here is what I am thinking right now. A lot of these sales could have been done over the last couple of months, and this is just when they are reporting them. Citadel is a high-frequency trading firm. They are a market maker. They are a long-short portfolio. They do essentially everything. So a lot of the time when we're looking at these specific filings for Citadel, it's very hard to look at exactly what they are doing because, one, they are a market maker. They are in an advisory group. They are a high-frequency trading firm. They do everything. So there is a theory floating around on the internet right now that what is happening with Citadel is that they are liquidating a portion of their portfolios in order to maybe they're worried about a margin call and they're and they're worried about a potential market correction or getting margin called themselves. It's possible. It's completely possible that this is this is really what's going on. But I think there is something a little bit different going on here because as, as we saw in last week's video, when we looked at Citadel and it looked like they were selling a lot of their position, we can see that Citadel Advisors here still has a portfolio value as reported from their last 13F filing of about $407 billion. They opened five new positions during the first quarter, but they did close 1,061 positions. So they are looking like... Uh, um, they're they're kind to they're trying to delever. I think that's what we are seeing a lot across the market a a wide range of deleveraging because over the last year leverage was great. 
uh, if you were able to to buy in essentially near the bottoms in last March or two Marches ago, March of 2020, and you went all out on margin, you were doing great. Now with the market conditions, margin in, in leverage in your portfolio is extremely risky. Now we can still see, uh, this is probably one of the most important parts that I want to bring up. Most recent portfolio value is calculated to be 407 billion USD. Actual assets under management is this value plus cash, uh, cash which is not disclosed. So the number that they are actually holding their, in their portfolios is about $407 billion plus whatever cash that they have received from the sales. Now, we also have to keep in mind, as we've gone over in a couple of my videos, that they do not have to report short positions. So that does also play a role in this portfolio value that we are not seeing. So in general, it does look like Citadel is doing some very interesting things behind the scenes. And, and I'm going to keep you guys updated on any new piece of evidence that we have in this situation to try to figure out exactly what Citadel is doing. So that is going to conclude this update on AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a great Memorial Day weekend, and I'll see you guys in the next video.